We are going to delve into the differences between two refrigerant fluids, very similar in their names, but completely distinct. We are referring to R22, and the now famous refrigerant gas known as R32. Let's begin by pointing out that both R22 and R32 internally consist of a single element, without the intrinsic existence of a gaseous mixture. This allows both of them to be charged in both liquid and gaseous phases. The main drawback of R22 lies in its harmful impact on the ozone layer. This is the reason why it is subject to environmental limitations. In addition to this, R22 exhibits a global warming potential GWP, of 1760, whereas R32 does not harm the ozone layer, and has a GWP of 675. R32 plays a significant role in air conditioning systems, while 22 South African Rand is used in freezing applications, refrigeration, and also in air conditioning equipment. Another significant disparity between these two refrigerant agents is their compatibility with different oil variants. 22 South African Rand is compatible with mineral oil and alkyl benzene, but is not suitable to be combined with PO oil. On the other hand, 32 South African Rand is congruent and used in conjunction with PO oil. R32 stands as a gaseous alternative for air conditioning equipment, exclusively for new units. This implies that it is not recommended to replace R22 with R32 in a unit that is currently in operation. 22 South African Rand is neither toxic nor flammable, whereas 32 South African Rand is a non-toxic gas with a low level of flammability, categorized as A2L. The amount of R32 required for the air conditioning system is notably lower compared to the amount required for R22, approximately around 60% less. The temperature at which R32 exits the compressor is significantly higher than that of R22. In fact, this is the primary reason why 32 South African Rand is used in air conditioning applications. We can say that it is a refrigerant that handles medium pressures. Let's start analyzing the most used pressures. 1. Low temperature system, freezing to minus 20.5 degrees Celsius, approximately minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look in the table to reach this temperature in the evaporator, we need that when the equipment is turned on, it marks a pressure on the low manometer of approximately 20.1 psi. This value is equivalent to 1.3 bars. 2. Average temperature system freezing to minus 9.4 degrees Celsius about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look in the table to reach this temperature in the evaporator, we mean that when the equipment is turned on, it marks a pressure on the low manometer of approximately 37.8 psi. This value is equivalent to 2.5 bars. 3. High temperature system. Refrigeration without freezing or air conditioning equipment. Another. In this case we are going to have a temperature of 4.4 degrees Celsius approximately 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look in the table to reach this temperature in the evaporator, we need that when the equipment is turned on, it marks a pressure on the low manometer of approximately 68.5 psi. This value is equivalent to 4.6 bars. 4. Now we are going to look for the high blood pressure in the table. For this we are going to take as an example, an external environmental temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. We increase this value by 10 degrees Celsius and look in the table for a pressure value for approximately 40 degrees Celsius. Thus we have in the table, a pressure of approximately 211 PSI. This value is equivalent to 14 bar. 5. Another pressure value that is usually important is the pressure of the equipment when it is turned off. In this case for the same room temperature, we look directly in the table for an approximate value of 30 degrees Celsius and we obtain a pressure value of about 156 psi. For an evaporator temperature of 5 degrees C, the pressure gauge on an R32 air conditioner should read about 129 psi. 
The high pressure of an air conditioner that works with R32 for an outdoor ambient temperature of 30 degrees Celsius should mark close to 350 PSI. And there you have it. The battle between the R32 and R410 comes to an end. Now it is your turn to decide which of these refrigerant gases best suits your needs. Leave us your comments and subscribe to our channel.